Hi everyone, hope you are doing well from wherever you are watching this channel, depending on your time zone. Now, if there is someone who has suffered a massive blow or really betrayal in William Ruto's government, then it is the immediate former governor of Narok County, Josephat Nanok. I'm saying this because I know Nanok has been working closely with William Ruto and even in higher position within Kenya Kwanza coalition and the UDA party. I'm saying this because I'm well aware that some of Nanok's colleagues, we are talking about former governor of uh, Kilifi, Amazon Kingi, we are talking about the former governor of Machakos County, Alfred Mutua. They have been rewarded already. They have office and they have positions. And remember, when the knock missed on William Samuel Ruto's cabinet secretary appointments, then the speculation from Kenya was that, oh, maybe Ruto wanted uh, Davis Chirchil to go for energy and all those, and then change the position with the Nanok, so that now Nanok will become the chief of staff at State House. But Kenyans were wrong. That was not the plan of William Samuel Ruto. His intention was very different, and his aim is so different. Remember, when you talk about the team around the State House, this is the loyal and trusted allies for the day-to-day -day activity at the State House. So you need people you can trust. <laughs> and in an administration, some of the powerful position at the State House, here Chief of Staff, and secondly, the, the staff, the, the, the State House, Controller, those two. But Nanok has been reduced to a deputy chief of staff. Not even a control, controller. That is where they have placed Josephat Nanok. It sounds so funny. This is like You have been a governor, and then you decide to, after your two term in office, you decide to run for MCA seat. Or like you have been a president, like President Uhuru Kenyatta, who has retired, then after retiring, you go and run for member of parliament. That's how it looks like. I want us to go through what set has posted as far as this uh, appointment is concerned. Because remember, this is the a kitchen cabinet of William Ruto, by the way. This is the kitchen cabinet. Real one, for William Samuel Ruto. So we want to check on that, but just a quick request for those who have not yet subscribed. Please, just remember to subscribe and turn on notification bell. And again to all our channel subscribers, thank you so much. Give our video a thumbs up and back to our discussion. This is what the has posted eh? five hours ago. President Ruto appoints new team. President William Ruto on Friday made several appointments to the executive office of the president. The president named Mr. Felix Koske as the new chief of staff and head of public service and Honorable Kato Ole Mentit as state house controller. So those are the two key people who will be playing a pivot role at the State House. Felix Koske and the Honorable Kato Ole Mentit. State House Comptroller. Economist Dr. David D. Wiley will, will, be, chair, will be chairperson of the President's Council of Economic Advisory. Former Treasurer PS, Dr. Kamau Tuge, as Senior Advisor and Head of Physical Affairs and Budget Policy, 
while Mr. Agustin Cheriot is senior advisor and head of Economic Transformation Secretariat. Former National Bank of Kenya Chair, Chairman Mr. Mohamed Hassan and the Policy Analysis Analyst Dr. Nancy Laibun are a member and associate member of President's Council of Economic Advisor respectively. The head of state appointed Honorable Josephat Koli Nanok, Deputy Chief of Staff. Look at that. Mr. David Mugoni, head of President Communication Service, and Mr. Hussein Mohammed, State House Spokesperson. <coughs> Another appointment. Even in these photos, you cannot see the photo of Nanok. It's not there. Key people have been put there. And that is where Nanok has been placed. Deputy Chief of Staff, State House. And that's William Ruto's government. Then this one raised the question why did William Samuel Ruto decide to reduce Nanok to that level? <laughs> why reduce Nanok to that level? That is the question in the building today. And uh, in my own view, maybe William Ruto is learning that. Nanok might be a person whom you might not trust with what we refer to as trust and loyalties with the secret matters around the state house. In fact, being a deputy chief of staff, you are far away from the reality of things. You simply work when the, the, your, 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 your boss is not there. So you are only working under his assignment. If you assign you to do this, is when you, you do it. If not, you are just there for a salary. So maybe Ruto has lacked loyalty in uh, Nanok. Why? Because if you check how Nanok was working with Raila Odinga and when they parted their way, it was so painful, it was like a grudge, and it was like they are creating some level of enmity. I'm saying this because, again, I want to compare on how Amazon King separated this way with Raila Odinga. In as fact, they were in the same condition. When Amazon King left, you can't trust an enmity between Amazon King and Raila Odinga. That means there's nothing Amazon King can maybe expose about Raila Odinga. So it means he's a man you can work with and he can keep your secrets. Alfred Mutua too. You can't pinpoint and then name it between Alfred Mutua and Raila Odinga. He left, of course, as a man of his own PR, but you cannot trace any issue that you can link to that level of enmity with Raila so that you can say, oh, if he leaves you, he gets out and exposes you. But for Nanok, you could see it. And if you trace, you cannot see anywhere Raila Odinga maybe betrayed Nanok the same way Wetangula was claiming, because to, the truth of the matter is that Wetangula was betrayed <laughs> when he was stripped off that minority position. So for Wetangula, we can understand where he was coming from. But from Nanok, you cannot trace where the bitterness between him and Raila Odinga was coming from. So it means Ruto is saying that if you work with Nanok, one day he can undress you down. Lack of trust and loyalty. And maybe he will not be alone. I'm checking here. I'm here to see Densi Tumbi. Remember the communication and the spokesperson, those slots have gone. Dennis Tumbi was among the people who were exposing the president and the entire or and his entire team some time back. And up to this level, I'm also saying them. This issue also being extended to Dennis Tumbi, he might end up lacking 
those powerful positions that maybe you could hope that is doing because of his work, he will land some good position there, a planned job. Similarly, that might not be the direction because it will be has proved that if you work with him, then the day you part your ways, he's going to expose you. And that is maybe one of the reasons why Ruto is afraid to have such people around him. Itumbi's job was finished, just the same way Nanok's job was finished. So that is it. Remember, Itumbi was recruited by the current governor of Nairobi, Sakaja, to work for President Uhuru Kenyatta in the team of maybe uh, a team here online uh, linked or something. He was recruited by Sakaj. And where is he as of now? So as of now, we have Felix C. Koskei, the man in the office. Remember, this was a former CS for Agriculture. And uh, after that one, of course, he was fired because of some scandals, according to the Jubilee government leader Uhuru. And then after firing, Uhuru went further in 2018 to appoint Koskei to serve in the JSC. So that was, that's where he was serving uh, up to the late, the, up to the end of Uhuru Kenyatta tenure in office. So we are going to wait and see how things will play, but I can authoritatively confirm that Nanok has been played, Nanok has been betrayed, and Nanok has suffered a massive blow. I don't know where his political future is lying. Maybe time is going to tell. Thank you. See you in our next video. But I would like to read your comments and understand your views as far as the appointment of Nanok is concerned.